Silver Saturday here on the 6th of May and it's uh, going to be a, a great full day of rugby action packed here at the home of Scottish Rugby and then behind us as well at the Dam Health Stadium. It's, it's certainly starting to fill up here and we've uh, got an abundance of fixtures here this afternoon. It's going to kick off with East Kilbride uh, versus Stewartry in the National Shield final. And then coming up on the main pitch is uh, West of Scotland versus uh, the Cartha Claymores in the, the Women's Shield final as well. The first ever playing of this fixture. And then the final crescendo of a big afternoon will be Hoyk versus Mar in the Cup final, which kicks off at around 6 o'clock this evening. You can certainly see a lot of... Uh, Enthusiastic spectators and supporters, family and friends made their way here to the Dam Health just to support their hometown clubs. And joined alongside me is uh, James Wade, who's the Senior Game Development Manager here at Scotland. And 
you know, obviously after the pandemic and everything that we've had, it's it's so great to see Cup Finals Day back at, at the Home of Scottish Rugby. Oh, absolutely. Um, morning. Great to, uh, great to be here. Thanks for having us along. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Not many uh, times to, uh, not, many, not many occasions for players and fans to come to the National Stadium to play. So, yeah, really good to have everyone along today. It's certainly starting to fill up here. We've got the mascots from uh, East Kilbride and Stuart Trey just ready to welcome the players on to the field. And as you can see, it's the fixture between East Kilbride and Stuart Trey who have clashed already this season in West Division 1. So uh, two teams who know each other very well and it's an experienced front row from East, Kilbr East Kilbride with Jap and Middleton leading the side and also McLennan and then Jones and Galbraith and in a back row of O'Neill McGiven and also Thornton and in the backs their halfback partnership of Smith and Murray and the very very experienced and robust Shanky at 12 and partnered with Aitken and in the back three of Dryborough, Blackwood and Martin a lot of experience on the bench as well for East Kilbride who will be hoping to lift the shield for the first time since the year 2000 Stuart Trey have got a front row of McCulloch, Maguire and McMorrin and then Maxwell and Porteous will pack down in the boiler house with Forsyth and McCulloch the blindside and open side flanker with Lindsay the captain leading the side at number 8 and Nicholson and the very very influential David Armstrong with the half back parents with McCartney and Austin in the centres with Forsyth and Yates on the wing with captain Pickin leading the charge from fullback You've obviously, you know a lot of the players here at Stuart Tree as well. And obviously East Kilbride, you're, you're really, really interested in this level of community rugby. And that's what they're playing for the Shield. And there's a lot of players on display this afternoon that will be having an influence to hopefully lift that crown. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's an opportunity for players to kind of put the leagues aside. Um, you know, in West 1, uh, Stuart had went really well this year. Uh, finished second behind Ghana and lost the three games East Coast Bride kind of in the middle but form kind of goes out the window so this occasion kind of does things to players um, definitely can does get you excited it can bring another level of performance out um, some might freeze a wee bit but we're really interested to see how players respond with the crowd as well things about to start getting going here the noise is picking up so it should be a really fascinating display yeah it's an early start you know I, I think uh, Stuart Ray mentioned that they had to get the bus at about half five in the morning uh, we've had Lorraine Kelly on social media for East Kilbride, so yeah. certainly both teams have been well-backed, well-supported, um, and there's a lot of enthusiasm in the stadium. It's obviously a huge area to fill, yeah. uh, but you know the, the, the noise that the, the spectators and the fans have been generating so far has been really positive. Definitely. Um, you keep forgetting it's just 10 o'clock in the morning right now. These fans have been up and at it since half six, seven o'clock, and yeah, it's no mean feat getting this amount of people from uh, Dumfries and Galloway and the West Coast as well, so... It's going to be um, yeah boisterous for this time on a Saturday morning, and you say you can't forget about the stadium and the size of it when the noise generated from the West Stand is, is is this good. So the Shield is going to be the first game to kick us off here for Silver Saturday. And also at the Dam Health, we've got um, a lot of rugby on display as well because in the women's bowl, Perthshire are going to be taking on Hillhead Jordan Hill, and the men's plate, Panmuir are taking on Kinloss Eagles, and then in the women's plate as well, Oban are taking on the Grangemouth. A reminder as well that the uh, Serobini Cup is also up for grabs today. It's uh, going to be played between Watsonians and Christophe Cougars. So Bruce Miller and Eric Jones will be hoping that their sides can lift the trophy there. That kicks off at 10 minutes past three, which will be live on BBC Albert. So you can certainly get your rugby fix this afternoon here at BT Murrayfield. And if you're nearby, you can certainly join the party atmosphere as well taking rugby either at the, the main stadium or Edinburgh's home at the Dam Health in behind the shadows of the, the National Stadium here. As you can see the main fixtures again for this afternoon and this morning at BT Murrayfield and we're just uh, eagerly awaiting the arrival of the teams for that first fixture between East Kilbride and Stuart Street in the National Shield west of Scotland and Carthur Claymores will be the nerves will be jangling for them as they are going to be next to take the field and then later on live on the Scottish Rugby website is Hoik versus Marr as Hoik look to do the double for the first time since 2002 and Marr hope to get their clutches on this cup for the first time in their rugby's history 
it's a great occasion, you know, not just for the um, not just for the players that go out there. You know, we've all been involved in finals and you know, you know, big games. But you look at the the mascots there, ready to wave their flags. Like this is a huge, you know, it's a huge occasion for the clubs as a whole, the, the supporters, the staff, you know, the spectators, and also the players. Oh, absolutely, and just looking at the mascots down there, these are the people who will be hopefully gracing this pitch in the future, whether it be with their club or some of them might even move on to do stuff with pro teams or who knows, even the national team. But yeah, it's kind of an inspiring place for these people to come along and someone that like, I work here uh, on a weekly basis, you do kind of forget the kind of, the, the kind of what this place holds for a lot of people. So yeah, you can definitely see it in the face of the people here. Um, and let's see what it brings out of the players. I think it will be... Uh, fascinating game as I said earlier league form kind of definitely goes out the window um, and we should be in for a cracker today yeah just a reminder these two teams East Kilbride and, and Stewartry have, have played each other in the league so far this season Stewartry had a really successful season finishing second in West Division 1 behind Garnick who uh, only went on to lose one game that season Garnick Stewartry lost three games one of which was against East Kilbride and that will do East Kilbride, you know, who had a, a relatively flat campaign during the league, that will give them that confidence, which a cup fixture, you know, a knockout rugby cup final, that's exactly the sort of confidence that you're looking for. Absolutely, it gives you that confidence to play, knowing that certain things you do against certain teams can work, and as you mentioned there, I think the last victory that East Kilbride had in the league was against Stuart Tree, so that'll be something that the coaches will definitely uh, play on and refer to, um, it does bring confidence, and you say the kind of, that league nature goes out the window today. It's a one-off occasion. There's confidence that it has been done before this season. So, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see the styles and how, how the teams kind of match up. And then how does Stewartry approach it? Because, obviously, in, in terms of league position, is there, a, is there a false sense of security for them that, that you know, they, they could potentially be sleepwalking into a game that they've come in as favourites, potentially on league form, you know, and that could introduce a little bit of complacency? Just looking through the lineups, I think they've got enough experience in the team. Um, Davy Armstrong, as you mentioned, has, uh, has been there, done that in, um, at this level of rugby, so played for balls and has won numerous Premiership and Scottish Cup titles with air. They'll need to rely on people like um, him to kind of like make sure that people are grounded, that the moments in the game when maybe things are maybe getting away, they can talk and regather. So, yeah, looks like the team's about to come out now. There's a round of applause and a, a rise in the atmosphere here. As Stuart Tray and East Kilbride make their way onto the pitch. East Kilbride led by Middleton, their captain. And Stuart Tray with John Pickin leading his team on to the field. And now the, the practice and the preparation for this fixture is done. And it's now time for action and it's up to those 15 men on that pitch to start proceedings off and get their team on the front foot here. And Stuart Tray just gathering the huddle and you can see East Kilbride there, just the last little bits of motivation between the teammates before they lock horns with a familiar foe in the, the shape of that team there, Stuart Tray RFC. Match official is uh, Greg Cameron. As he okay, enjoy the game. takes place in centre field with the, the club captains. And that's an important moment for everybody involved there. The mascots, the captains, and also the match official. Okay. All good, yeah. Ryan? And there'll certainly be some nerves in those huddles. Yeah, you can see the kind of energy building. I think a few last words will be just talking about what are the first things that each player is going to do in the game how they can put a mark into the game but time for nerves is over I think as soon as the ball is uh, in play then you'll see you players just need actually fall into what they do best Middleton the captain just um, in your previous shot there just making his way into position because the play is going to be underway imminently here at BT Murrayfield and with the blast of the whistle the National Shield final is now underway and East Kilbride put it exactly where they want it and it's just went off of an East Kilbride back there so it's going to be a throw in the line out a first test here for Maguire 23 year old hooker the pressure throw he manages to find his man 
It's wrapped up there by Nicholson, who has to work hard to maintain possession. Armstrong slips in the no scrum half. Now coming around the corner is the, the hooker there, Maguire. Stuart Ray playing composed rugby as Armstrong looks to distribute now and stretch the field of play. Stuart are looking to maintain possession in these early stages of this game. And there's a breakaway now and Stuart Rick, possession rugby benefiting them early on as he scampered away over the 10 metre line. It's a great break from Stuart Rick. Now trying to get the ball on the front foot. Armstrong distributes there to McCarney. He breaks the first challenge, then breaks another. You can definitely see what Stuart is trying to do. Move the, move the ball from side to side. Really stretch that East by defence. Backwards, and great success for uh, Angus Lindsay with that break on the far side there. Good offload again. and A carry from the McCarney yet again looking to try and take this ball forward. The defensive effort from East Kilbride has just went up a notch. Carrying forward and then the tip on back inside. Away, away! Nicholson again finds Armstrong, who's trying to use his experience, bring his winger into play, but Yates is the door is closed for the winger. Another carry forward for McMorin. <laughs> but the defensive resistance from East Kilbride stays strong, and that'll give them uh, an abundance of confidence there because from the breakaway, did well to scramble back and win the penalty eventually. Yeah, they, they had a couple of nibbles at the breakdown there, but um, really strong defence around that initial guard shield area there, and like just latched on really well there, limiting the options for Armstrong and turning the ball over really well. Good kick there from Blackwood. He takes up kicking duties for yeah, East Kilbride, the 20 year old fullback. You see here, great work on the floor from East Kilbride. Yeah, um, just separated him from his support and uh, this really strong body position over ball, great latch. We get a great break here by uh, Angus Lindsay. Back off black. Advantage, high. It was a good heads up rugby. Advantage, high. From pass. Stuart Trey, who have certainly started this game with a lot of confidence. They were able to win the line out there. Ball has just evaded that ruck, but Go Nicholson advantage. was there just Number eight. watching when praying for the gap to open so he could snipe round the fringes but the challenge just a little bit high there from East Kilbride so the penalty is going to go the way of Stuart Trick so they can try and nudge this ball downfield again and maintain possession and put a bit of pressure on East Kilbride. Yep, um, again great still of the line out there from Stuart just to kind of regain possession from Good that early turnover. Just getting up in front of his jumper there and uh, tied it up really well by Lindsay at the tail of the line-out. Stuart Ray throwing at the tail, it's uh, unorthodox but it comes back on their side. And carrying towards that 10 metre line, Armstrong already heavily involved in this game as we, we knew he would be. Now distributing, interlinking round the back, Armstrong makes a break, he gets round up towards the 22, brings the supporting players in, it's a great two on one. And can they get over the line? They stretch over. And Stuart Trey strike first here. And it's Driver up. Who's got the try? So it's Forsyth who's got the try there for Stuart Trey. Outstanding try there. Again, you can just see the influence of Armstrong. Working hard off the ball to get that second touch uh, on that wrap. And just the way he squares up and attacks that line. Just really short in the East by defence there. And the handling skills in contact. Time just off. to kind of link with his outside players are outstanding. So it's really well executed move there by Stuart Tree. Goes through the gap and the ability for the outside backs there. Game picking game off, yeah. onto Forsyth. Yeah, great play there from Armstrong wrapping round. And just bringing his captain picking in there. And you can see this. Just simple two on one rugby. Manages to stay on his feet as well. And great footwork there from Forsyth to go in for a try not an easy finish having to step in and deal with that contact coming from behind but yeah you can see them Stuart have been threatening with that uh, ever since the start of the game you can see he's go by they're trying to really look at that breakdown area to turn over play but uh, yeah great, great start to the game a little uh, break for some medical attention but it was the try from Forsyth there and 21 year old who's a 
playing for his uh, boyhood club. And it's certainly a, a moment that he will remember. And it gives us a little opportunity to see the, the work there that Interlink can play from Armstrong. And we did mention before the game how influential he'll be. And you can see there, he's had a, a huge impact on this first five minutes of this game by setting up that try. Definitely. It's easy sometimes when you make a break on an occasion like this just to kind of head down and go for it. But eyes are up, picking, working really well on the outside to get that support. Uh, and the way they linked up there really opened up the opportunity for, for, for Scythe. Just on the five. Time on. It's ironic that you said eyes were up from picking as he just sorts out his contact lens. Because it was the uh, the player who got the assist who's just had to get a little bit of uh, optical treatment on the pitch. Just to gather himself to take this conversion attempt. And this will be a, a nerve-jangled moment for the captain of Stuart Tree as well. It's certainly been a good start from Stuart Tree. have probably enjoyed the first five minutes with the ball in their possession. Right footed kick. It's curling round, but it's just going to evade the uprights. So it's uh, only five points for the team from Castle Douglas, but it's a, a been a brilliant five minutes for them. Great start, persistent pressure inside the East Kilbride area, which culminated in this try. A great powerful finish from Forsyth there on his 30th appearance for his hometown club. Bride take the restart it's not went 10 okay. and then it's bounced off the, the field of play you can see what they're trying to do though with that restart though trying to make it really contestable um, but just the margins of error obviously are much smaller when you try to get it that close to the 10 meters so yep uh, possession back to Stewartry centre field which is quite a dangerous position it'll be interesting to see what they do from here yeah and Blackwood great connection with the ball as well he's obviously got a great skill set yeah. That he's 20 year old and you know even you know that a lot of pressure and experience in some influential positions can play fly half as well so he's a bit of a playmaker but in these occasions it's you know it's the pressure that comes on yeah definitely especially after conceding you try it's there's, in those moments what do you do next let's so, yeah, we've been a game panel would have talked about throughout the week um about trying to get the back on the ball but as you say those pressure kicks and uh, the execution uh, just need to be uh, yeah. first Real test at the scrum, first scrum of the this morning, and Stuart Trick get out on top as Armstrong takes the ball to the line. He did have a supporting player in McCarney who was running that tight, acute line. Really well read there by the East Coast. Are we, are we yo, are we yo, are we yo? Maguire carrying forward. East Coast defence not rolling away, which allows another penalty to go the way of Stuart Trey. So, through the tackle space first. They're going to anticipate another kick into the corner. And Stuart Trey really not taking the their foot off the pedal at the moment definitely territorially all the play has been down in uh, the East Kilbride right half um, again a great opportunity for them to launch uh, uh, an attack from this line out that's you Maguire is uh, going to throw into the line out but that man there Armstrong has been very influential so far Maguire finds his target off the top and now in the hands again of Armstrong carry forward from the Stuart Tree forwards now look at the try and make inroads in this black and yellow defence they're looping round the back Stuart Tree like look to try and impose themselves in the wider channels back foot yellow back foot back foot good in it Lincoln play with the likes of Porteous coming into play now Great variety from the Stuart Tree attack there, looking to shorten the East Kilbride defence by mixing up inside and outside plays, going out the back. Great hands Maguire, from uh, now Maguire. Now a 2 one again, and now it's the chance for McCulloch to stretch his legs. He goes inside one, offloads again. Nicholson there in support. We're going to have to cover this in terms of scrum half, and it's been well covered, and then a huge hit coming in from East Kilbride. Nicholson looking to try and keep the urgency in this passage of play. Getting to the breakdown quickly, looks for his options on the right hand side. Not happening, so Armstrong takes, takes play on the left and charging through there yet again. Now Armstrong finds some space but just evading the Stuart Tree mitts on that occasion. 
because there was a, an opportunity for another two on one situation on that far side mm, you can definitely see uh, Stuarty really stretching that East Kilbride defence um, as you can see here Bods goes out the back just slightly behind I think it was picking there in the wide channel um, maybe his eyes were up looking at what the defence were doing coming across but you could definitely see the intent here from Stuartry the way they're mixing up the points of attack we're looking to make his Kilbride commitment in the middle of the pitch accurate line out there from East Kilbride going to the tail in a, a dangerous area and carry forward definitely the power in these Kilbride carries a little bit narrow in attack there as well managing just to make it to a similar situation, similar area that they did with their initial carry and yet again not being able to break this Stuart first man, first man. gain line backwards, they managed backwards. to turn over and now they'll look to try and launch a counter attack of their own Nicholson <laughs> burrowing about in that breakdown and East Kilbride can see another penalty oh, that's a momentum killer that isn't it from being in possession being turned over and then conceding that penalty immediately puts them right on the back foot of the opportunity the here for uh, Stewartry to cement a platform right down in that East Kilbride corner Armstrong will be hoping to nudge this as close as he can to that 5 metre line and he does a relatively good job of that from an acute angle about 10 metres or so shy of the East Kilbride line this will be a, an interesting line out to see what they're going to okay, utilise from this passage of play. As you can see there, just really great play by the Stuarty forwards there, just to kind of latch on. Um, sometimes you ball! see uh, players just play for penalties there, but really positive play there, trying to turn the ball over and doing so really effectively. And it's culminated in this, the drive mm. from the forwards now coming on, the nudge comes again. They're getting closer, inching closer towards that line. The referee with outstretched arm signaling the penalties coming the way of Stewartry. They've got free ball to play with. And the Lincoln back in field. And McCartney looks to dart his way towards the line. Still advantage. Now in the hands of the hooker. Maguire. Still advantage. A couple of metres shy as the players wrap around from Stewartry. There's, there's certainly gaps and porous spaces in this defence. Another two and one picking goes for the line, but he looks like he's been held up. Away, and the player away. outside. Really good last ditch defence there by his Kilbride just to hold the ball up. Still advantage. Carry forward from the, the prop from Stuart Trick. Nick Morin looking to make inroads and again the players willing for work for Stuart Trick to extend their lead. Armstrong now spots up supporting player and they crash over the referee. A signal that there's no score. It's going to go back for the penalty. Stuart Trick did have the ball to play with. But Huge. It did look like McCartney had just squeezed through a hole there but the referee going to bring that back just that little um, fake there by Armstrong just by the time for his, his centre there but just couldn't quite get the ball down as he went over the line again the last stitch defence by East Kilbride there you can see the effort they're putting in but it's looking like he's starting to take his toll there's a lot of uh, uh, tiring look, a lot of East Kilbride players looking a, a wee bit a wee bit tired there but outstanding effort and actually that will give, give him a lot of heart moving forward see how they can get out of this situation a little shake of the head there from uh, McCartney not overly impressed with his uh, his efforts there to finish that move on coach! he's got his team into a really attractive attacking position again Set! Greg Cameron keeps an eye over this uh, scrum and now at the tail picked there by Lindsay he carries forward and looks to stretch but just not able to free his arm enough to get that ball over that white wall. Away, away. East Kilbride defence again holding firm but the advantage coming from the referee. Lindsay recycles himself and offers himself up for a carry. <laughs> Slowly but surely getting close to that line and the referee now perhaps going to have a, a little conversation with the East Kilbride uh, captain about the discipline yeah it looks like there's been a few kind of infringements down in this zone here and it's it's something we'll that's here, okay, it's hard to get a balance between isn't it because you, you're really on that okay. edge you're looking to kind of really stop that really, defence okay. but it yep. can be uh, chat, really really uh, hard to kind of get that balance right so yeah, off. it'll be uh, and see what um, Stuart should do from this platform here third Sorry, bite of the cherry
going to be a little break there for the, the referees, just giving them a little opportunity to perhaps to speak to their teams and maintain discipline and get the water on as well after 14 minutes. But, you know, in the balance of play as well, Stewartry have, have been relentless in their attack. Perhaps not as accurate in a couple of occasions that they, they perhaps could have been, but you know they've, they've had opportunities to extend the lead. So East Kilbride have done well, you know, defensively to keep this uh, at five 0 Yeah, it's definitely been a bit of a purple patch for uh, Stewart here. But as I mentioned earlier, that like kind of last ditch defence and repelling attack to half attack, it does build confidence. Uh, but it's essential that uh, East Kilbride do get the hand on ball at some point and look to play away from this area of the park to look to impose their game plan at the moment. Um, obviously, they've got a another situation to deal with here it looks like it's going to be a, another penalty to Stewartry just to the left of the sticks here so okay. you guys want off time on the referee offside. just signal that time is back on offside for East Kilbride so there's going to be a scrum down I'm just in the shadow of the East Kilbride try line now. And there's been a bit of ascendancy up front from Stuart Rick. They look to turn the screw and try and yep. build that momentum. Yep. Interesting to see they've left the shots. I completely Guys, free go. here. It's let's see what evolves from here. Let's coach! Firmly signalling what he's wanting from the scrum, and then the nudge comes on, it twists slightly, and it's been picked up at the base and carried forward by Lindsay. There was a, a chance of redemption for the Stuart Ray inside centre. He's managed his to offload to Armstrong, he gets the ball through the hands, and now a chance for Cricket to dive in the corner, keeps it alive, great offload! Outstanding play there by Picking, what they've got to be put in touch, but the ability to get that ball away. Um, created something from almost being the ball being turned over there so it's a second score four for sight and as you say it was great work from Pickin to just float that ball back inside and yeah. find his winger and you alluded to it before the scrum is that they loaded the right hand yeah. side and it's the left hand winger who gets the score on the right hand wing yeah absolutely so in that situation East Coast Pride they need to put someone into that channel to watch any break so Zoria and you yeah, both the ball was away before touch, the yes, the absolutely, thank far you. side wingers are working round, that doesn't, but the, definitely the offload from picking that was the thing that made it. Did really well to avoid the ball being turned over in the mall there. Long ball here out wide, which does allow these cut by defence just to drift across. But uh, the ability to get the hands free and get the ball across was just outstanding there. Conversion attempt, not successful as well, but it's a brace for the... Stuart Trey stalwart and for sight the young 21 year old with a double in the final for his hometown club and there's certainly these moments that he would have been dreaming of last night it's a partnership that definitely seems to be uh, coming up with the good so far in the game just seeing that offload again he's got ready to get the restart Kane doesn't okay. travel 10 it definitely is what they're trying to do, but it does put you under pressure when you don't get it right. Yeah, especially when your your team's under the pump a little bit, you're, you look to try and just push that envelope a little bit you're too close to the edge. Definitely. Good long bounce, please, gentlemen. Good long bounce. Stay square at all times. So it's a chance for Stuart Trey again Both to get the ball in the square position. at all times. Start to nudge their way into this East Coast right half yet again. We played. About 17 minutes here in the Let's National Shield final, the, the opener of a, a huge week. And bringing you live coverage Set. versus Scotland Hold. versus Parker Claymore's in the Women's Shield final following this game. And we've got the Sarah Bailey Cup on the main pitch, which is live on BBC Alba, and then Hoyt versus Marr in the Cup final at 6 o'clock this evening. And there's a chance for Precise 
the teammate on the far side Yates to scamper forward towards the East Kilbride 22 really powerful play there by Yates um, again Armstrong just using his hands just to fix the defence and great carry to put Stewart and really comes in position again Nicholson finds Armstrong he travels with the ball finds his inside centre on the car Nick Pickin coming into the line yet again the fullback has been instrumental in creating these overlaps in the wider areas just on that edge for Stewart Street as he Turn travels forward the ball's turned over he's got right nullify the attack but it's ended up back on the Stewart Street side the referee has just signalled that there's a, perhaps been a head knock there as well so quickly and very efficiently from the match official getting the medical team on just to assess Same the situation offside in there as well. from but again oh, it's, so it's, a, it's, out, you know, it's, it's been a pattern of play for this 18 minutes it has been East Kilbride okay, coming the ball back to Stuart Tree, then then launching There's a pass of the usually the first phase to make that ground and then just persistent pressure after yeah, that yeah they were going forward with the ball just thought for a hit and I suppose East Kilbride have been looking to see how they can impose themselves into the game you can see they're having success in their defence just around that kind of Garchard area with that first carry taking advantage yeah, when yeah. the delivery from line maybe isn't as sharp um, and catching the ball receiver uh, yeah, so no the, 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 the ball player there so there'll be words here to, go, guys, to uh, look at how can they get out of this situation chance to regather no and again how can they impose themselves yeah, yeah, yeah. on this game he did get a short and it's just there there from the, the forward, okay. double try score for Scythe who for a 21 year old playing in the national the stoppage was here right the ball was here we stopped so. far too relaxed for uh, what I'd have been like as a 21 year old when you got pace playing on a uh, pitch this big, it's something that it's, it's a gift, isn't it? And yeah. it's something that I don't particularly enjoy no. being in big open spaces. But if you've got the uh, tools to deal with it, it really is an opportunity to kind of show what you can do. And um, he seems to be doing it quite effortlessly at the moment. Yeah, he's been, Let's crouch! This is a great start to this game. Bind! Set! Caught in at number eight for East Kilbride. We're hoping that he can nudge his team forward a little bit more at this set piece. Starts to pop up slightly in the front row, but Lindsay does well to pick. Finds Nicholson and then Luton with his outside backs. But the nudge and the counter nudge comes on from East Kilbride. Now's a chance to break free from their own 22, but the ball's just drifted forward as Blackwood tried to offload to a teammate. You can see what East Kilbride are trying to do again. Fork. The defence actually provided some opportunities for a good turnover. Yeah, a, a few uh, jack of attempts there and a great counter lock here just to take advantage of uh, slow support by Struici. But again, it's just this moment here, isn't it? East Kilbride really need to keep the hands on ball, see what they're trying to do. If the ball had gone to hand, then we're in a really positive position. But again, when you're doing those pressure skills, whether it's like that shot kick off or it's an offload in contact like that, then it's. It doesn't go quite right, it puts you right back under the pressure. So another defensive set for Bang! East Kilbride players to survive. I think Evan Martin was set! on the wing for Lally! East Kilbride, just I'm ready to... Just ready to pass for that opportunity. Again from the scrum, Stuart Trick imposing themselves on the rivals here. Are we Are we Lauren and Maguire. An auxiliary scrum half and the carry forward yet again from Forsyth who's making his 50th appearance for Stuart Trick. Armstrong brings Austin into the game. Should find some space on the, the edge now and again looking to bring the, the influential Forsyth back into proceedings and unlock the Cisco Bright defence for a third time in this National Shield final quarter of the game gone and there's been a, a relative tackle now release Nicholson's got a pod of forwards just waiting to set that platform he strips these Kilbride defence one more time he carries forward and back back inside great offload Nicholson now linking up as he scampers into the East Kilbride 22 yes the energy from this move somewhat dampened due to the Nicholson's involvement in the build-up no that play. He gets back up again and he feeds McCullough. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Back through Black. The yellow side, which he does, and into the hands of Blackwood. He kicks downfield. So watch there by Pickett. He's got for size for some support. He brings Austin into it. He bounces back off his right foot to go centre field. Good option. The support was there. He's Kilbride fighting on the floor now. Armstrong tries to gather a, a very awkward pass there at the base of that rock. The referee oh, really? coming back for the penalty. And I think the East Kilbride supporters certainly, judging by the boos, don't agree with that decision. But it's uh, I think it's just another momentum kick for East Kilbride. Great kick, turns uh, picking onto the onto his back foot, and the kick support was really good. And a quick penalty yeah. for Scythe, and then Austin into play, and I think Stewart might go in for their third score. They get over the line, but the referee from the shrill of that whistle has perhaps signalled that the ball has just drifted forward. Thank you, mate. In the build up to that play, Armstrong. Forward pass. Almost looked like he got in there, and we'll see here if it was a, a forward pass. Good, quick, intelligent play. Good link up play from Porteous as well to bring Pick in. Time off. And then I think it's perhaps this pass here from Austin that one. back to Armstrong. It's, a bit too much to give. <laughs> it's, it's right on the edge, isn't it? And what, those, are, those are the calls that can go either way. Um, that is a that is a statement of a man who doesn't agree with that decision. There, I think, James. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's one that could definitely go either way. You can see why it was given, but I think what was really positive there from Austin is the way he works the outside to create that space, and it just allows uh, uh, Armstrong to fill back, to come back in. That's it. Uh, I'm glad I never wore that today. I was going to okay. pick that out before oh, I came to Rishi Murrayfield, but there might have been a bit of a fashion right. clash there. <laughs> I think she wears it a bit better than you do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would do. Yeah, thanks. I definitely agree. Guys, take your time. We've got another injury over there. So. But it's great to see. And that's what we're on. This is a. The, the, both teams have worked hard to get here. If we think about East Kilbride, they've had narrow victories all the way. They beat Haddington 29 points to 20. And then a 17-14 victory against Kilmarnock, which could have went either way. And then uh, against North Berwick, they won 23 points to 13. They've been made to work hard to get here, and this is the reward for the success of, of that day. So you can pretty much wear whatever you want. Absolutely. And looking to the right here, uh, these Kilbride fans haven't sat down uh, for the entire game so far. Um, black and yellow in abundance there, um, and despite the scoreline so far, they seem to be really, really up for the up for the day. Make sure that the lads uh, uh, have got a lot of energy, kind of get on with the game. Just an injury there for Thank you. Jones, I believe, for East Kilbride. Brian, so that's a strapping issue. Is that an injury? It's certainly an injury for the medical assistance to a few of the players and the Stewartry as well through McCulloch. Just Time on! His fingers strapped up as the coaching personnel of Sandy Curry and, and David Borland watch on Hillbull. for the Stewartry. Nice try. Three. Down the gap, okay. Black one. Good long bound, please, okay. Into the scrum, but They've spent the last 22 minutes behind their own halfway line in, in some way, shape, or form. Let's crouch! And they'll be hoping to try and build some momentum of their own. Bye! the margins as we enter the second Set. half of this Hold. 40 minutes. Hold. 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 on Silver Saturday. Coming to you live all afternoon. Yes. Offloading out of contact and breaking free from the 22 now bounding over the halfway line for Scythe as they're covering for Stuart Trick. Great attacking intent from East Kilbride. Get the ball through the hands backers, and it's backers. just evaded the, the clutches but well gathered again. Charge down fight. A chance Tackle, to start through but the door was firmly closed on that opportunity but it's bounced straight back into the hands of the East Kilbride players. Captain now, Middleton carrying forward. This is energy zapping stuff for East Kilbride, who've been made to defend for the lion's share of this first half, and it's a okay on side. Kick downfield to try and gain some territory. Well gathered by Pickin. And Pickin's got for Scythe for company. He goes over the 10 metre line and then offloads back and field to Maxwell. Vantage high tackle. Started out with the ruck and 
Armstrong links up with Austin who's just back posted on his left hand side but Stuart Trey again are going to win the come back and win the penalty and it's it captain and the referee's going to have a little conversation but yeah, we'll get a, an insight as to what they're what they're saying Okay, that's you can a penalty see this uh, penalty. breakaway here, it was uh, yeah. a brilliant passage of play from East Kilbride, platform set up there by Shanky, six seven and then great offloading and work in the Lincoln play. Really powerful play there by the uh, um, East Kilbride attack there, just to break out again, using footwork just to get to the edges of that just two, three, off, okay. uh, tackle there, really strong fend there. Aitken there was the, with a the breakaway, he's showing great pace and stride there as he made his way up towards the halfway line. Great cover defence as well from Stuart Trick, knowing how important this, this lead is. And there's a, the referee has issued a, a warning to the, the whole team. Get a rest. So if there's anything else blocks the East Kilbride copybook, you could perhaps suggest that the referee might have to go to his pocket to, to try and deal with the discipline. Yeah, it's been a pattern of play, as you said, kind of for the game so far. First time we've seen East Kilbride ball in hand for a few phases, but just that penalty count again, it just kills that momentum and just puts them on the back foot. Does again. he mind the day, Dave? Yeah, that, that's the, as any team, that's the mm. disappointing thing because when you get a bit of momentum to to just carelessly give away penalties, mm. you can see territory after that. Then you you invite pressure, and that's the difficult that's thing. There's there's almost the you know the lack of trust in that defence, and the nervousness comes into that's that true. game as well. You know, games of this occasion, Cheese, there's that. There's that rush of blood to the head, which, which means these decisions, you know, you, you sometimes act on instinct. Yeah, and, and individual players will have to take it upon themselves yeah, to impose and what, what can they do to change the game. And again, sometimes it pushes it maybe just a bit too far. Hey, We've seen a few tackle. tackle attempts and tackle attempts just not going quite right. So let's see what happens from here. Uh, Stephen Hogg is uh, coming on to replace McCulloch, who's struggling with a, an injury. Just when you thought S Hogg was done playing the, the, the BT Murrayfield, he comes up the in the, the National Shield final. And the guys of Stephen Hogg this time. Going to the line out now, it's accurate, it's at the front, it's been flat back. The bubbling ball does not evade Nicholson as he has to sweep up. Stuart players have to retreat to protect the ball. It's a first involvement for Hogg and he breaks the, the defensive line no on the first occasion and manages to charge 10 metres in towards East Kilbride half. Armstrong no, no. linking up. Sorry. Again, it's been a familiar pattern in this game as he distributes to the vice captain Lindsay. He needs to pick the holes in between the, the limbs of the East Kilbride defence forward now, the platform for Stuart Ray is set, and again Armstrong just carrying towards the line, bringing Yates into proceedings, Release. trying to attack that dog leg in defence, now McCarney, he's got Austin, Austin's got a two on one now, and he's got Forsyth on the wing, he looks to try and fend the first challenge, but has to roll and protect that ball quickly and sharply, not give away the penalty as Stuart Ray again come knocking at the door. Meter shy of that East Kilbride line, but it's this time the penalty goes the way of East Kilbride. Can they no win arms. the penalty and they'll be able to no kick arms clear, the Again, it's sometimes a little bit too easy for East Kilbride to break the first. Guys need a wrap. The first contact, the first tackle, and then they, they're really going to the edge. And, and there's a lot of two on ones. Perfect. Yeah, I think the way the punch in East Kilbride defence is obviously kind of making them uh, the East Kilbride players flood towards that breakdown and uh, Armstrong's really really good at kind of going to the wide channels they're playing out the back giving them the space to do so and again another 2v1 on the channel with four sides That's right. almost going in for his third there I thought I thought I knew what you meant and you see here the link up play and Austin who has been a great distributor in this game look at him bring for Scythe into centre field and look to really attack that line acute just not happening there as Ethel Bride win the ball at the line out. Look to spread proceedings and stretch the defence. Looking to try and play the way that Stewartry started this game. Stewartry retained, retained the ball in the opening couple yes. of minutes and then broke free and then on five minutes opened the score and threw for Scythe. 
and then nine minutes later he got his second and that's been all the scores in the first 27 and a half minutes here at BT Murrayfield in the National Shield final. Let's go Bride kick clear, it's been almost well kept in there by Pickett and I think this will be interesting to see on the, the replay. The assistant referee had a good look at that but Pickett Pick tried a little bit of footwork all yeah. point at the scoreboard as well perhaps. No, no, no. I think it, back perhaps the correct decision there. It looked like when he was trying to dribble it back in field, his, his other foot was still off the pitch. Yeah. And that's a great clearance kick there for Mr. Bryan. It's great territory and opportunity for them to have a decent platform to launch something. Look at the stretch and then kick downfield. He spotted a gap there, but it's well covered by Pickham, who it calls for the mark. But not back, a bad back. way to try and nudge their way closer down the field because from this free kick. Back. You can assume they're going to get the ball back, but here is the, the incident there when the ball was trying to keep, be kept in there by Pickham. Yeah, you can just see that his foot's on the line, lines in, lines in touch, so yeah, great decision by the match official team there. Blackwood spots a little space, goes for the 50-22. The and this will be an interesting call to see. Armstrong thought he kept it in, but that is a brilliant kick there from... The Blackwood, the East Kilbride fullback, because he spotted a space yes. in the opportunity there for a 50 22. And now East Kilbride, 28 minutes into the game, the their first real opportunity inside the Stewartry 22. Definitely, I think East Kilbride is showing that uh, attempt with the arm, please, okay. from the clearance kick to the crossfield by Shanky there, and he's a great 50 22 to really put East Kilbride in a position to do something here. Flat up the top, it's no, now then to tackle. Play on, play on. Protected. The carry forward. <laughs> Up to the five meter line in the roar now from the, the travelling fans now. Rises to try and encourage East Kilbride over this line. Blackwood now coming into the game. He looks for the off stab over the top and that's an intelligent kick. Do they get a bounce of the ball? They do! And it's a try for Martin in the corner. Intelligent footwork from the forwards and the backs. Innovation from Blackwood at fullback. And it was just a matter of loitering for the bouncing ball. And East Kilbride with their first real chance to get over the try line. They grasp it with both hands. And it's now East Kilbride 5, Stewartry 10. What a massive confidence boost that is. First venture into Stewartry's 22 uh, to come away with a try. And as you mentioned there, using the space in Moorfield affords great chip. Ball took an edge to kind of sit, but really great patient play there by, Black, uh, by Driver just to dot down. Play. It's, uh, it's Martin in uh, number 11, I believe, that's um, on the wing there. We'll get a better look here. And it's uh, it was well collected. And it was well finished. He got, took a little nudge as well on his way down. The conversion attempt, and it's a brilliant connection there. Just not got the curve and the fade on it as he would have uh, perhaps liked. But he was instrumental, Blackwood, in the build-up to that try. Yeah, we'll carry on. And there's Martin to get that score. And, you know, we, we, we played 29 minutes and it was all Stuart train. All of a sudden, a little bit of, you know, playing rugby in the right areas for East Kilbride and they come up trumps. Definitely. And say, yeah, it's getting really That's effectively, good. mixing up safe. long shots, 50-22s. <clears> but on the balance of play to be... 10-5 down after half an hour with only one spell of possession that's really positive for East Kilbride and sets them up for a really interesting final 10 minutes and a half We've certainly got the game plan to beat the Stewartry side here, East Kilbride are only one of uh, two teams to defeat Stewartry this season Garnet being the, the other side who defeated them twice in the league East Kilbride with uh, the one victory at home in February Now a little bit of confidence coming on from this East Kilbride side and especially that young man Blackwood who should try and use some footwork off road in a dangerous area. Just gotta be careful your player though. Yeah, yeah, protect the ball. The knee. The box kicked downfield and it's a low trajectory into the, <coughs> the hands of Stuart Train. They've got the skates on with a sight straight on that. <coughs> Firmly fixed on that East Kilbride 22. <coughs> Lindsay doing well to carry. Play on. A lot of players to the breakdown, which is uh, resulting in yes. excellent. Back foot, yo, back foot, please. 
Lindsay and Forsyth link up to charge forward. The pod comes round. Nicholson scragged at the breakdown, which makes it scrappy, but Stuart will bring the ball back. Hogg now. He carries forward, almost gets caught on his back, but does well to wrestle into a more fortunate position. Now lateral running from Stuart Trick. A couple of big carries and fends there. Armstrong now spots a lot of space and now the opportunity is here for Stuart to reply straight away and Yates bounces in for a score and dives over for a try and straight away within a couple of minutes Stuart Tree reinstate their 10 point lead over East Kilbride and now East Kilbride 5, Stuart Tree 15 That's exactly what you want isn't it, after going to try it down a positive response like that You can see East Kilbride what they're trying to do is just have a go at the breakdown as you mentioned, if you commit numbers to the breakdown, you do leave, leave yourself short on the outside. And Stuart, she's that really well and really powerful finish there from uh, the one the eights. I think driver of Felice Bride will be a bit miffed. He's the only winger yet to score in this set final. But again, great play. The forwards doing the hard work getting round. And Armstrong just spotting that there was a chance there to manipulate a two on one. And the conversion attempt is successful for picking. And it's the first time we've had a, a full seven points in this game. But Pickin gets the conversion. And you can see here that the play from Stuart Trade just to work their way towards that edge to get Yates. And on his, on his 101st appearance for Stuart Trade. He gets a, a try at, at DC Murrayfield, and I'm sure that'll be a, a try he'll okay. be recalling for many, many a year. Andrew Pickin is uh, James P uh, John Pickin's Thanks, uh, brother, is a replacement <coughs> now for Stuart John the field. Hogg tries to gather from the restart. He's knocked on. He's called Bride now. Have the ball straight from the kickoff and win the penalty. Martin goes quickly. Has that to is not and ten juggle six. it and Blackwood comes into the, the line and it's a cross field attempt. I think uh, Stuart are going to let this bounce in dangerously so. Number six. But the referee coming back from. Number six, never on the penalty And uh, all of a sudden it's been it's been pedantic and it's been well orchestrated by Stuart Trey, And all of a sudden East Kilbride are, are just throwing the kitchen sink at them and. and yeah, you, Definitely, I think that Blackwood <coughs> from fullback stepping in with his kicking game is, is really stretching what uh, Stuart are doing in defence. Uh, Stuart Shee looking to let the ball yep. bounce there, which is, <laughs> can be quite dangerous in the 22, but um, again, great opportunity for East Kilbride to get straight back into it. It looks like they're Here's opting to go for the, the three points, which in cup rugby is, is vital. To accumulate and maintain a little bit of pressure on that scoreboard. So Blackwood. Yeah, for close the number coming off. Thank you. Taking his time sizing up this kick here, just inside the 22. Right footed connection, it's accurate. Bye. And straight away. East Kilbride reply through their fullback. Three points means it's East Kilbride 8, Stuart Tree 17. You said there, it's really important Number to stay five. in the game. Um, three points will come invite on later. Just keeps Change. East Kilbride in touch. Um, but it's really important now Next that they um, have really good go, defensive set to make sure that Stuart Tree can't impose themselves back on that scoreboard. Referee Greg Cameron just waiting on the, the ball to make its way to the halfway line Armstrong is going to get play back underway and put it kick in, in down the field trying to get it as close no to hands. that East Kilbride 22 as possible to maintain pressure <coughs> keep them camped inside their own half but Blackwood is becoming a never increasing influential player for East Kilbride forward again and burrowing underneath the, the flailing arms there from Stuart Trick. Snipe there at Scrum Half and Smith spots a little gap and is then scragged back in towards the congested area. Blackwood looking to kick downfield and these players just getting in front so 
just offside, and unfortunately there. In front of the kicker. Black with a little lack of communication there. But again, it just hands these offside. little mistakes, just hand the opposition, <laughs> you know, that little bit of ascendancy and territory to close the first half. Yeah, we're definitely seeing kind of uh, 25 right? areas where East Coast Bank will be talking about right it as they go into half time for things to improve on. When they when they have ball in hand, what dangers to keep the game really, really positive. But these errors are just allowing Stewart <coughs> to build a good platform. Chicken's going to take his place back on the uh, replacements bench because uh, Nicholson is back on the field of play. Stewart have got a very able replacement in scrum half. Yeah, the line, please. Armstrong, if needed. <coughs> Numbers. Had an impressive game at nine. And just patched up back on the the pitch at the top of your screen. Yeah, online, please. Yeah, definitely. The way they're moving the East Kilbride uh, defence around, orchestrating his uh, pack as well. For a young nine, it's really impressive. Back off you! Flat back at the line out from <laughs> East Kilbride. Just managed to get their claws to the ball before the Stewart trip. And this is an important time in this game. A couple of minutes left to play in this first half and East Kilbride can ill afford no, to concede. No, ball's not Playing in a really dangerous position. Territory now for Blackwood. Standing still, guys, you can move. Right foot kick down the field, and he's made a good connection <coughs> with that yet again. Pick it. Distributes to Austin. He sizes up his options and looks back in field. Little show and go there, and the supporting player and Armstrong just <laughs> travelling <laughs> in the inside line. Guys, that's ripped, and it's gone forward. Martin. Manages just to strike the ball. It's been a knock on Ripped there. Forms. But the defensive accuracy from East Kilbride has improved after the opening 15 minutes of this game. Yeah, definitely. Body again. First. Great long kick there by Blackwood. The kick chase um, to shut down this open side play. Nearly, got, nearly getting caught by Austin, but again, really just to kind of scrag the arms <laughs> from there. Slow down that ball at the breakdown, which allows the defence just to get up and put pressure on the nine. And, yeah, great play by Martin. I think that was Middleton who managed to get his uh, mm. body over the ball. That's coach! Captain leading from the front. Hey! Set! Bring proceedings Use to it. a close for this first 40 minutes. And Yates carries forward. Bounding towards the 22 off that scrum, but just got a little bit too far away from the supporting players and East Kilbride holding sniffed an opportunity to isolate the Stuart Tree right winger they win the penalty line out if you want it floor. yeah there's, there's some real skill over the ball from these Kilbride guys um, and they'll be looking to kind of really take advantage of those situations where maybe the uh, Stuart attack gets disconnected the referee has signaled that that is the first half over for these two sides there's only 40 minutes to left to decide who is going to be lifted the national shield here on silver saturday at bt murrayfield and it's been a, a positive opening 40 minutes for stuart Trick. but the game is uh, certainly not away from east kilbride yet they trail by nine points at half time and it's certainly not a, a deficit that they are in no position to overturn because there's positive aspects of their play both sides giving it everything in that opening 40 minutes and it's going to be a, an interesting final 40 yeah definitely when you look at the territory and possession East Kilbride will be relatively happy going in this close uh, they know they've got the tools to unpick that Sushi defence so yeah chance to gather at half time for both teams and see what uh, any changes they make half time score 8 points to 17 and this was the opening try on the game on 5 minutes and you can see the influence there of Armstrong looping in and bringing the, the winger for Scythe into the game, picking the, the captain, being able to manipulate that two on one and put his winger in for a try. Yeah, you just look at the, all the men in motion for Stucci there, the support uh, runners of Austin there in that loop, really fixing in the defence there. So you can see how he just steps in there, fixes that uh, centre, which just allows Armstrong just to go through. And again, simple hands, but when done really effectively a load of space there for Forsyth to finish really well. Yeah, good finish from Forsyth. And this this was the, the second score for Stuart Ray. And this came on 14 minutes. Again, impressive work from the forwards to protect that ball and get the, the jackals out the way. And I think this is perhaps the pivotal part in this move because McCartney was getting caught up in that ball and manages just to free his arms 
to give the ball to Austin eventually and again picking Lincoln up well floating the ball inside for Forsyth to go in for a second and that's you look there you've got both wingers and the full back right enough for him to channel and if you go back to the scrum they actually had loaded all their backs onto one side of the pitch as you say the, the, the centre there McClellan did really well to uh, just to use his strength to keep the ball he's great footwork here just to evade that first defender almost got there and this is like I say this is pivotal here his ability to get the ball away and as you say the offload from picking on the channel and the outside channel was outstanding and well followed up by the left winger there there's a really pivotal point in the game where East Kilbride were, were really struggling and managed to give the ball to Blackwood who, who spotted a space, goes back in field and this was the chance to the 50-22. Notices that space, the accuracy there from the Blackwood was impressive because it meant that East Kilbride got into the 22 for the first time which set up this try. Yeah, definitely. Relatively new law to the game but one that you can see that Blackwood's really aware of and spotting that space on the short side especially is uh, really impressive for quite a young player. He was able to find the space there with his boot as well. You know, he's a player that obviously likes to kick the ball, accurate with it, but it was perhaps the right option there with this big dead ball area at BT Murrayfield. Just spotted that he'd probably stolen a march on Yates and Martin could just gather the bouncing ball. As long as it was fortunate, he could go in for the try and that was that was a you know a well worked move there from, from East Kilbride. But straight away pretty much, it was only three minutes later, Armstrong again instrumental in releasing Yates for another score. Absolutely, I think in the preceding bits of this play, the Stuartie pack had really kind of shot on the East Coast by defence, and a one-on-one -on -one for a player like Yates, really powerful, um, you've, he's got to back himself there, and he uh, fends really well, and just goes past his uh, opposite man there to score a really important try there, just as East Coast were getting back into it. Yeah, it was a, a really important try, it, it meant that at that time, the 10-point margin was uh, Re re replenished so it means here at half time in the men's national shield final on silver saturday at bt murrayfield it's east kilbride 8 stuart Tree 17.
Kilbride make their way back onto the main pitch here, the BT Murrayfield looking to try and turn round a nine point deficit currently trailing eight points to 17 in the National Shield final here yeah, coming up after this game as well, we're live all afternoon here from BT Murrayfield we've got West of Scotland versus Carter Claymores in the, the Women's Shield, the first ever playing of that kicking off around 12.30 this afternoon then later on this evening we've got Hoyt versus Mar at 6pm in the in the cup final and also at 10 minutes past 3 on BBC Alba we've got the Sarah Beanie Cup which is Watsonians versus Christoph and Cougars okay, over the damn health as well we've got the plate finals, the men's and the women's with the Thank men you, Panmure versus Kinloss the women's finals Oban versus uh, Grangemouth okay, and, and the women's bowl is Perthshire okay, versus Brian. Hillhead Jordan Hill, which is currently underway. Okay, yo! Black time is on. David Armstrong is going to get the second half underway here. The Stuarts are currently lead. And 17 Vantage points to 8. Vantage high. And he's called Bride. Managed to get a penalty straight from the start of proceedings here, the high challenge. Which means they'll be able to nudge down Fieldwich. Alongside me Guys, still is it James down. Wade. And this is a it's a good start, they're obviously not textbook and it's not what they would want like prescribed from the kickoff, but allows them just to relieve that pressure straight away at the start of the <laughs> second half because they need momentum. Yeah, definitely. Usually when we see from the kickoff you're looking at the ball as far back up the pitch to maybe do a defensive set higher up, but the fact they've got an opportunity to now to launch an attack from just over halfway, that'll be something that they'll uh, be really looking forward to now get into this half. Probably at half time we would have talked about momentum and not making mistakes, so Let's see what uh, they can produce from here. They throw into the line out. It's uh, back into the hands of Smith, who managed to get it in the hands of Murray. Ball through the, the back line to, to Blackwood. His evasive running has deceived the Stewartry defence, so East Kilbride maintained position on the halfway line. A little bit better from East Kilbride now, and they break free from the shackles of their own half up towards the Stewartry 22. Jack now finds offside advantage. McLennan. Advantage, advantage offside. The advantage coming for East Kilbride, but they've got a chance here. It's their try scorer now, Martin. Play on, play and it's on, intelligent, advantage. quick paced attacking play from East Kilbride, who are now just a few metres shy of the Stuart to line, but the referee has called the penalty for offside. 13, never on site. And that has been a positive start to the second half for East Kilbride. East Kilbride starting the half the almost guys. identically to how Stuart did in that first half. Um, again, using the width of the pitch really well. Um, great break on the outside there by Lucas Aitken, just to kind of ghost round and almost uh, managed to get through that last defender. But the way they moved the ball back across, I think it was the Stuart 13 who jumped out defence. Um, which uh, again just gives another penalty platform for East Kilbride to do something from here. Accurate from the line out, they set up the mall and they'll look to try and nudge this closer towards the Stuart to line. It's cohesive, but the ball is just bobbled. Three from the clutches, but a three. A single penalty. Number three. From the AR. Good call there from the referee. The assistant referee spotting that there was a, another infringement. Thanks, Brian. So East Kilbride will get a second chance here because the, the mall. It looked cohesive and then the ball just bobbling free. Just put up, please, guys. The okay. knock on went, but the, the call has went uh, the way of East Kilbride. Yeah, you can just see what they're trying to do. They're trying to secure, but just on that far side, uh, the uh, Stuarty uh, tighter coming around and just probably disrupting it illegally. It's going short there. They look to go back towards the throw in the line out. It was Jap who's throwing in, but just not able to find the target as they look to link up on that short side. Yeah, that's something that East Coast will have to work out. Just to, when they get into these zones, just having that composure, maybe not looking to force that extra short pass, especially in a tight situation like Guys, that. Guys, long veins, long veins. Difficult decision there as to what your your next option is. is because the opposition Set. perhaps would look to compete at that line out because of the power that came on from East Coast. However, it's a little for Stuart Trick. They maintain their advantage as Yates powers his way in towards the East Kilbride defensive line again back to Armstrong right footed kick Not cleanly connected so Stewartry now 
camped inside their own 22 in four minutes or so has been all East Kilbride and that is going to be the reaction that the East Kilbride coaching staff would have asked for. Yeah, absolutely. It would have been all about probably eradicating some mistakes which have done largely so far. Um, so I think, yeah, the coach will be really happy with the platform so far. At the tail, well gathered. Short line there as East Kilbride try to orchestrate a gap in the defence. Try scorer Martin. He goes once and then burrows down and goes straight. Blackwood now puts boot to ball again. Austin read that. It's been hacked downfield. Back into the hands of the double try scorer. Challenge coming on there from Blackwood. And a little trip after as well from Forsyth. I wonder if the, the match official will say anything about that. Potentially not. But again, perhaps the, maybe not the, the, the right option this time. A bit pedestrian from Blackwood. And he was swarmed and there was only really going to be one outcome there. Yeah, trying to Over execute ten, a chip kick that close to defence. Uh, yep, asking to put yourself in a wee bit of trouble then and scrap a bit of play. Fortunately, face could ride. Allowed him to retain ball until that line up just there. Yeah. Away, yellow, away. The line out not going not as planned for East Kilbride. It knocked on and it ended up in the clutches of Lindsay who carries forward and now for sight. Away, yellow, away, yellow, away. And Jason for sight, that is, is taking the ball forward. Armstrong I'm looking to text Martin, the winger. He drops the ball, but he's watching it well. He has then got a couple of Stewartry players for company. Austin can counter ruck and drive East Kilbride off the ball. There's space up on this far side if East Kilbride use it, but they opt to bringe forward. Big looping pass as East Kilbride throw the caution to the wing and hack the wind and hack it downfield now. Picking tried to gather, tried to use some footwork to get the ball under control, but a knock on, and there's a few errors coming into the, the Stuart play now, and, it, and it almost inviting that just that little bit of pressure. Yeah, you can just see that it's getting a bit uh, disjointed there from Stuart Tree. Picking actually with a nice first touch with the boot, but just just lifts his eyes up looking for that pass just as the ball comes down into his hands, and again, a bit like the first half, that pattern of play, just those mistakes allowing the opposition to creep in and get territory. A few players also kind of knocks Jason Forsyth uh, hobbling around for last passage of play. Looks in a bit of pain. It's a, it's a great occasion, uh, Silver Saturday. I was saying before the kickoff how great it is to see back at, at BT Murrayfield and given a chance for these teams to grace the national pitch. And there's been a lot of really good players out on display this afternoon. I know we've spoken perhaps about the likes of uh, Armstrong, but John Pickin has had a good game for Scythe with two tries. And I've been impressed with Blackwood as well um, for East Kilbride. So there's been a lot of uh, you know good players who are really grasping the opportunity, you know, at being centre stage in, in the spotlight. Yeah, definitely. I think it's like I say, cases like this bring out something else new as a player. Um, I think also the the, the hard cast from East Kilbride uh, really coming into the game with the power, allowing the space for Blackwood just to orchestrate uh, using his right boots. So, I it's. Uh, as it's a big pitch though, so as, as, as the game goes on, it'll be interesting to see how players deal with that fatigue and how the coaches also use their bench. You can see a few niggles coming in, so it'll be interesting to see how this all kind of pans out. It was this side of the, it was this side of the tent. It's true, true. Yeah, it was. To try and win the shield the because they were runners up in 2002. Guys, need more stability, okay, before the set. They were Wait defeated the set. by Cordy on that occasion. A very one sided game. But Stuart Trail nice certainly made amends for the visit 21 Bind. years ago. Bind. Stuart Trail looking to try and write their own history yeah, later on this afternoon. Hoyke yeah, looking to try and do the same. It was 2002 when they won the, the League and Cup double. So Stuart Trail and Hoyke have graced the pitch at the same time, but for Scythe, snaffles off of the scrum there. Now Austin gets the ball into the wider channels, and Yates wants to try and open his legs. He evades the first challenge. Then the second, and now it's a foot race to the corner. He dives over for a score. And Stuart Tree, with an opportunistic break from the scrum, extend their lead here against the run of play in the second half. And it was broken field running, an interlinking play which allowed Yates to slide in the corner. And it's now 8 points to 22 that Stuart Tree lead.
just in their corner there. The props rightly getting a lot of praise there. Outstanding hands on the backs and great finish from Yates, but the pressure that the Stuartry Packs put on uh, East Kilbride there, that scrum just disrupted the ball completely. Jason Forsyth just again, just after being treated, snaffled really well and then yeah, just the timing of hands there from Armstrong and Austin and uh, some finish from Yates here. Three defenders using his power dives pretty early it's a good job it's been uh, <laughs> raining this morning just to carry him over yeah I think he started diving on about Thursday to get to the <laughs> line there but it's a great finish great awareness for a winger to finish that as well absolutely once you're on the floor yeah you, it's so much harder to be bundled into touch so yeah there's a guy who knows his craft there knows how to play his wing and a great great finish powerful powerful running from Yates picking can't add the extras but it was Number opportunistic, eight. a eight. loose ball. Snaffled on by Forsyth there. Number Nicholas eight. 50th appearance, the interlinking play eventually from Austin, releasing Yates. Yeah. And I think it's these two. The players are going low, yeah, and Yates good. just pams them on the back on the top of the neck, escorts them to the ground, and then almost a 40 metre slide into the corner for the winner. From the restart there. He's been knocked on by East Bride and that's a bit of a sucker punch for East Kilbride because they, they started incredibly well in this second half and for about seven minutes of this second half they were the better side and against the run of play, Stewartry then, they score and just take that margin, just make it that little bit wider between these two sides. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be a bit of a gut, gut punch to the East Kilbride there and it's came from something the East Kilbride pack in the scrum had looked Stability, relatively solid guys, so far. So again, even that kind of drive by Stewartry kind of Maybe it's just not maybe concentrating at scrum time. But they're looking to get back into this as soon as possible. They did it in the first half, so hopefully they'll be able to do it again. Set! On, hold! On, 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 Scrums collide again. Nicholson feeds and is protected by a robust Stuartry pack as they look to stretch and pick and now. It's giving the ball to Forsyth and you perhaps not bet a bit against a, a Stuart True winger, perhaps getting a hat trick in this fixture, both on two tries. He's to break competing at that breakdown. They've got to strip the ball, but then it's ripped out their clutches, but the referee has went the way of East Kilbride and given the penalty. And it's a good reaction Holding. from Guys, I can't play advantage. East Kilbride there to puff out their chest and fight on the Post. floor. And Absolutely. It looks like they're going to go for the sticks. Again, East Kilbride really good over the ball there. Strong is a, a few turnovers uh, through the Jackal now. Um, Stuart should be looking to just look at how they get support to that ball carry maybe a bit quicker. Uh, but again, East Kilbride are really happy with that response there to that knocked on uh, kickoff. And it's quite a sizable kick attempt, this, isn't it? Yeah, I was thinking that myself. It's a, a big effort. It's, a, it's just going to be a a huge, huge moment in this game. If he's able to nudge this over, just shy of the, the halfway line and the 15 metre line. This is a big, big kick for Blackwood. Be sharp on this one, guys. He's okay, definitely going to have to give it everything that he's got. Great connection. They had the distance anyway, just not the accuracy. But it's certainly not a bad option because East Kilbride now trying to put pressure on Armstrong inside the Stuartry half. They turn over the ball. And East Kilbride now get the ball back in their possession. And the referee signal and a knock on there. So Scrum, which in hindsight shows yes. it was not a bad option at all from East Kilbride to go for the, the penalty. And that'll be something that kind of plays in the mind of Stuart when you've got someone in the opposition who can threaten the sticks on that far out. Okay, so it makes you wonder engage, about okay. maybe doing for that extra jackal or okay, what you do in defence. Uh, and a rare mistake there from Armstrong playing out there uh, with a knock on as well. So it's good to see Skull Bride responding after that first setback in the half. Yeah, you think a converted score certainly makes this game Set. interesting. Hold! Steady scrum and then the nudge comes from Stuart Trip. It's been well gathered at the base there. Well protected on the oh, floor as well. Me. Penalty coming the way of East Kilbride. Blackwood oh, back again. Up early, okay. Really looking to utilise him as a playmaker in this game. 
And the offside is there. Blackwood looking to try and go quickly. He taps it, he taps it, he goes. He looks for some options. He goes right. Tackle. There's some players there. Lurking. A good option there from East Kilbride. Yes. On the floor, having to get the ball away from the breakdown. The carry forward now. No. Inches away from this line. Going against the grain. Blackwood distributes. The space is there. The support is also there for East Kilbride because they're shackled by Stewartry. The carry again. The charge back from Stewartry. The resistance from the side who currently are in the lead. In this National Shield final. Jap now. Tips the ball on. Trying to find that gap in defence. That chasm to appear for East Kilbride. It's a short line. The momentum almost carrying them over, and then the snap round the side there. Matthew Smith spots the space in the defensive line, and the scrum half burrows his way in between the defensive effort that came on from Stewartry and the black and yellow flags here. Then Murrayfield start to wave again, as it's now East Kilbride 13, Stewartry 22. Absolutely. Great play by the uh, East Kilbride pack there. Using their power just to shorten up in this. Using the tips really well. Bringing wingers into the play. You can see here just eyes up will be there from Smith and Nine. Just to spot that gap near the post. Really hard place to defend actually in the defensive line. And takes advantage of the defender having to come from that other side. So yeah, game one again. East Kilbride, um, despite all the Stewart's, uh play just won't go away which sets up a really really good final yes and it's a successful conversion attempt as well from Blackwood which means that there's now one score in it he's got play 15 Stuttry 22 thank you guys you caught it didn't you converted trial make you interested yes <laughs> it's the, the complete opposite of the commentator's curse there there's great awareness from Smith just to sneak his way in you can see here, heads up, just looking at that gap and spots that the, the fold not coming round from Stuart Trick. Yeah, McCulloch the pot maybe just moving towards that rock, maybe should have guarded that uh, left hand side, but. From the kickoff, he's still very gather, but then crawl out of uh, danger. That would be frustrating, penalties like that, that double movement penalty, maybe again, getting a bit too eager and remnants of things that happened in the first half yeah, there, just creeping back in and just that score and a try as well. Armstrong, his knock-on perhaps led to that pressure which was incessant from East Kilbride, gets a chance to just knock the ball closer to the East Kilbride line. Thank you. So Thomas McLean is a replacement on for Stuart Trick, replacing Michael McCulloch. And now Maguire. Maguire looking for his option and eventually it appears the gap in defence and Smith putting pressure on Nicholson at half back Nicholson does well to get himself back off and into position the fold coming round and Hogg is there he carries forward Stewart spots space against the grain Austin now finds picking he thinks he's spotted a, a mismatch, looks to offload to Austin, but it's went back and Armstrong sweeps the ball up and keeps it in Stewartry possession. Nicholson into the hands of Lindsay. The carry forward again and the awareness in the backfield from Stewartry to try and pick off the holes and the gaps in defence is impressive off the ball. The work from Forsyth on the ball is equally as impressive as he carries forward patient build up and possession rugby here from Stuart Trace they bring McCartney into play on that cut from the fly half Armstrong there's been a great turnover on the floor though from East Kilbride now Blackwood thinks he spots a, a little gap but just hacks it downfield and it's made good ground from their own 22 and Blackwood again at the front and centre of everything that's been good about East Kilbride benefiting off the great work on the floor he can hack downfield and relieve the pressure. Oh, standing clearance kick that from one through and sticks to force a line out and just near the halfway. But again, that, that the ability for East Kilbride forwards over ball. Stewartry must be having words about how they kind of go into contact, look to get support there, maybe move the ball a bit more. 
but it's a great balance of styles here the way the Panatta against each other thrown at the front from Maguire again perhaps not their usual repertoire but it's went the way no of the, the side currently in the lead and in the ascendancy in this National Shield final carry forward from McMorrin entry please to the gate Armstrong distributing to Austin and he anchors his run and loops it round to try and create that gap in the defence but the, the ball to his winger perhaps not the one that his, uh, his teammate would welcome he's just dribbled off the field of play but again the, the drift defence from East Kilbride pretty impressive the science recognise what Stuart's trying to do not maybe committing as much on these kind of loop plays and out the back plays I mean we've got numbers on and again it just takes away that uh, option for Austin to maybe pick out his uh, support there and he'll be disappointed with that pass after putting his uh, wingers through yeah, quite effectively earlier in the game the intricate play in the backfield to spot the, the gap there from Forsyth which he was just leaving behind him on his wing Come he passes on, back to Pickin and he back, kicks it downfield straight into the hands of Middleton the captain he's giving it to Shanky Shanky's giving it to Blackwood and he thinks he spots a lot of space and he there's acres of it down there he chases his own kick with the referee going to come back for the, the penalty tires. good awareness there from Blackwood again but you feel he does that a lot number he's six. looking for the space he's in behind retires. because he's got a really really potent Offside. boot yeah the way that Stuart is setting up the backfield there's, there's loads of opportunities in 50-22 we saw one just towards this touchline here and Blackwood again against the grain for a right footer seeing a of opportunity and they just stood up on the pitch but they have got the penalty from this and again with, uh, with someone of his range this is a this is a definitely one that could definitely go over we've seen one from a nice similar position sure a few minutes ago from Blackwood in about the 52 minute mark which was a more of an yeah, acute I mean, angle this 12. is a uh, blob on in front 12, for, I never saw six, so thanks for that. East Kilbride a full back and this would make it a really, really interesting margin in this game. It's currently East Kilbride 15, Stuart 22. And this would be a vital three points for East Kilbride. He's definitely got the legs for it. Sharp, steady run up, but he's uh, not connected well with that. You'll be disappointed at that. He's been kicking well, striking the ball really well, and. I would expect uh, for what seems so far for him to have got that. Yeah, he's not made a great connection with that ball. And there's going to be a couple of replacements for either side. Chris Root and Robert Greenfield are readying themselves on the, the touchline to enter the freight. Gathered there. Impressively so. No, no. Grant Dryborough. Regathered it. Regathered it. Backwards. Chance for Murray to gather. He does well. Distributes to Blackwood. He loses his foot in. Puts he back up and back, spots his face in behind. And if this goes out, that would have been an excellent kick, but it's been well gathered by Hogg. He's loitering on the wing. He gives it to Armstrong, who returns the ball downfield. And that would have been a close call. We're, we're far back in the gantry here at BT Murrayfield but it certainly would have been a, a brilliant kick if he'd managed to get another 50 uh, another 50 22 yeah just considering he was on his uh, backside seconds before but you definitely see the coaches have talked to the players about where they play in this half you can see the kicking game definitely come to it uh, much more in the second half and how they look to play for possession and territory Greenfield coming on no hands! East Kilbride throwing themselves into the breakdown to try and get the ball back for their Guys, side. Get your hands out the rocks, please. Away, Black! Away, Black! Running straight towards the Don't do defensive that. line. Don't do that. Play the ball into the man. And Number 10, play the ball into the man. Signalling that the penalty is going to go to Stuart Trip. encroaches in the East Kilbride half 
Just hold the ball. A couple of reshuffles for either side. Get there. Smith, the try scorer, the most recent try scorer in this game, has made way for Greenfield. And Root replaces for Scythe, who was instrumental in uh, Stuart's last score as well. And now the first involvement for Root as he powers forward. It's now pinging about inside that ruck, but it goes back the way. And Maxwell scoops it off the ground. Lindsay ducks the shoulder. Root clears at an acute angle as Armstrong loiters at fly half. He ghosts through the, the gap there, but has been well shackled in defence by East Kilbride. He was inside centre, and McCarney now carrying forward. The side's going to have to act as scrum half. He pings the ball the way of McCulloch, who wasn't able to gather it cleanly just off that left shoulder of his. And all the, the, the accuracy and urgency that Stuart has showed in the first 40 minutes is, is somewhat evading them. Which is perhaps on, testament to the, the pressure and the resistance that East Kilbride have shown in this uh, first 20 minutes in the second half. Definitely scoreboard pressure will do that to you, so not being able to get away, maybe trying to force things, recognising that Guys, support your body East Kilbride having success a breakdown and then you have to chuck more men into, into that area. Maybe decision making about whether to go in or to sit out, you can see him play there. Root taking his place on the left hand side of that scrum. Hog packing down in the, the traditional number eight position. Set, hold. The scrum comes together, it's steady. Then the nudge comes on from Stuart Ray's Root tries to make the challenge in the scrum half. Just not able to, and the hack downfield, the bouncing ball does not really pick in. He gathers. Keep coming back, Torpedoes it back over the halfway line. Onside now. A few East Kilbride players waiting there. Just hugging that touch line as Driver gathers the ball. Distributes to Blackwood. It's a broken field running this time. He keeps the ball in hand and eventually it opens up there for Aitken. He charges over the halfway line. Turnover's good. Big luck on the floor from. Stuart Trick has been knocked forward and now he's probably get a chance to try and counter attack but the referee's going to bring that back for a scrub a couple of knock-ons in there knock on Richard Murray perhaps thought all well, this Christmas is came at once when he's he seen the open field in behind a try at BT Murray field but the referee Greg Cameron brings it back for the scrum it's probably going to be a little break because one of the front rows is getting a little bit of uh, medical attention and it's never usually a good side where the pe medical personnel also signal for a replacement so I think his race perhaps is run yes, things are getting it's going to be the field for uh, Gary Thornton play it started at number 8 can also play it tight head so yeah. there's going to be Take another on. replacement there guys come up to the mark hook up to the mark Thank you. Nine, just wait for me, yeah? Just wait for that. Put it into the scrum now, it's going the way of East Kilbride. Let's crouch! Bide! Not successful, the referee just not happy with that, so it's a free kick to East Kilbride. They go quick, they carry forward and they make great inroads into this Stuart Ray half. Away, away, block, away, block! No hands! No hands! Nothing shouting at Stuart Ray to get their mitts off the ball at the breakdown. They can ill afford to concede any penalties. And Blackwood will relish the chance of a bit of redemption in front of the uprights. Murray has to twist and weave and dance his way out of trouble. He's got break concede a bit of territory. But then they spot some space in behind the tester there for Pickin. He makes contact with the ball, but he's got time and space. He evades the first attempt to charge down, but runs into a bit of traffic. And now, East Kilbride surround the Stuart's captain to try and get the ball back, but well protected and supported by his teammates. Hogg coughs the ball up and gives it to Blackwood. And the referee has perhaps spotted that he's been hacked down the field too far to benefit from any advantage. Right, guys, so, East Kilbride again 
in an yeah, attacking thank you, position. I was thank you. you know, at half time they were they were looked like they were a little bit flat and dejected. And all of a sudden, East Kilbride have got their tails up and have got themselves in a great position in this Come. game with not long left. Absolutely, and it's the work rate and the pressure they're putting onto that Stewartry backfield. Uh, picking initially with a dummy to maybe get out of the first defender, then the kick chase really swamping him. And again, another example there of Stewartry maybe just looking over, overplaying a wee bit in the 22 there, um, like they did a few moments ago, which gives again, East Kilbride a chance to really have a go at it from here. Set! Hold. Okay, thank you. Strong scrum. Yes, yes. It's been driven back there by Stewartry, who now flex their muscles up front and win the penalty. And East Kilbride now have to retreat back 10 metres, relinquish the possession of the ball and give it back to Stewartry. As David Armstrong takes it quickly and gives it to Austin. Austin's got McCarney there. He's been well tackled on the wing. But again, careless in possession from Stewartry and they pop up the ball. It's the few areas starting to creep in here, which is allowing number East Kabai to seven. really Change. put pressure on there. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of a killer when you do something good and immediately you maybe just make a wee mistake. So, again, a chance for the uh, Stewartry pack here to maybe get a few of the players out of, uh, out of jail here and let's see if they can put on another powerful drive. Fergus Barn looks like he's been brought on. The 24 year old land agent is your body weight, guys. taking Move his the place in the front row. Let's crouch! In this National Shield final. Bide! He's got right. Set! Hold! See that important this passage of play is and their players. Great carry forward. They can go around away, the corner. Away back. Maintaining possession. Murray. Blackwood now on the halfway line. Spots a space and now he's released Martin. He goes up the stand side. He chips and hacks it forward. And now it's a foot race to the bouncing ball. Can Armstrong back get back first? And he grounds the ball. There was space there to play with. Great awareness from East Kilbride to manipulate the space on the edge. Just, make sure no one just a bit too heavy. Okay. And perhaps a little bit too infield for that kick, but a good option and good attack and attempt from East Kilbride. Definitely, and that's the one thing that playing with would afford with the big dead balls is that ability to kind of stick the ball in towards the end goal and have a foot race. And you just mentioned there, probably a wee bit off his right outside his right foot there, but uh, well covered by Armstrong. Chip over the top from Shanky. A real experienced East Kilbride player. The knock on from Stuart Tray and the carry forward now from Kilbride. It's a yellow leg. It's a yellow leg. Trying to get the arms free to get that oh, offload in, but it's just ricocheted off the Stuart Tray player. The referee oh, signaling the penalty there. Space, east to west. And Fergus Barn. The carry forward and now is uh, certainly taking a clatter as he limps back into position. Out. And Blackwood's just going to tuck this into the corner. And East Kilbride will have to be accurate here. That's Big moment in the game here, 10 minutes to go. Try here, brings the game almost equal. So, Stuart, you'll be really have to be switched on not to give any more penalties as well. I think uh, it'll be in the back of the referee's mind the amount of offence has been given the last few minutes. Reminder next up, we've got Let's West go. of Scotland Let's versus. Go. The Carter Claymores for Sounds the Women's fun. Shield final. That's kicking off at the 12 30. Join me and Lucy Winter for that game. But in the Men's Shield oh! final at the moment, it's just called Pride who gather the ball. They set up the platform and they look to power the legs forward. They break free from the tail of them all. The forwards folding into position. Scrum half looking for the forwards to offer themselves up for a carry that it distributes to the backs as Aitken bounces no, back in field. Shanky has to twist and turn his way out of contact. He's got right forwards demanding the ball, demanding work. The replacement scrum half almost manages to intercept that, and I think the referee perhaps has got a decision to make here. 
Yeah, it's one of those ones, isn't it? It's a one-armed attempt at, a, at an intercept, which can put you in trouble Captain. if you don't get it right, especially where we are on the pit. So let's see what the ref says here. Deliberate knock on. The referee said there was absolutely no was off, chance was he was going to gather that. So it means there's going to be a yellow card. Stuart you down to 14 for the remainder of the game. On their own okay. try line. He's goodbye will be stiff and bloody. Yeah, definitely. I'll be disappointed with oh, that. Oh, 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 oh. There is a, a yellow card to Thomas McLean. Time on! No, it was sorry. Yes, it was sorry. It was yeah, it was Thomas McLean who got the yellow card. And now he's called Bride. Pop it into the corner again and looked it. Go again. Look to try and set up that platform and nudge over. Yeah, maybe breaking out maybe a wee bit earlier. I thought they could have probably kept the ball just in that mall before breaking out that short side. Let's see yeah. how they mix it up this time. Yes, just hold the ball, please. That changed mid. Uh, Additional uh, personnel up no, front no, for East Coast Bride. It's going to be a replacement because it looks like Andrew Pickin is again going to come onto the pitch because Nicholson okay. is uh, succumbed to an injury. East Coast Bride accurate from the oh. The congesting cluster on that area. It crabs in field. It goes to the left. It splinters. It drives towards the line, the referee in good position, saying it's been held up by Stuart Trick. So the opportunity is past East Kilbride by, on this occasion, the defensive effort from Stuart Trick. And that man in particular, Angus Lindsay, is very important. Seven points is the advantage that they hold. East Kilbride with their additional personnel. Yeah, Angus Lindsay's been invaluable in their attack with some hard carries, but if that turns out to be decisive, that would be the thing that he'll uh, definitely be uh, remembered for in this game. The cheers coming on for Stuart Trey to try and get a little bit of encouragement in their side. It's been replied pretty quickly by these Cobride support, which is great to see. A great atmosphere here at BT Murrayfield. Shanky carries forward. Loden and now the big fans and the powerful carries coming in from East Kilbride. They've got their backs to the wall and they're coming out swinging. Murray. Teammate just catapulting himself into contact. Fly half spots of space and goes against the grain. Advantage offside. The advantage coming as well for East Kilbride. Just watch 17 black for a headlock, please. An interesting position. Urgency in this passage of play from East Kilbride but the referee is going to bring that back and Mark with five minutes to go it looks like they're trying to go quickly behind the referee I think he'd bring that back definitely just in behind loitering in behind the referee not going quickly East Kilbride 15 points to 22 down yeah you have to do that in front of the referee if you want to go quickly Hands but it'll be an interesting decision here four and a half minutes left do you get yourself within a score Scott, do you try and play for, if you, do you go for the try now here. and get level so it'll be interesting to see what's going on in that East Kilbride huddle right now what the decisions are going to be made five minutes or so left well, five minutes of normal time yeah, left here in this line. National Shield final obviously if ties are all square we will go to extra time but we will cover that as and when we need to but then following this game, as we mentioned before, West of Scotland women will be taking on Carter Claymores in the first ever play in right, right. of the National Shield Scott? Women's Final. It's kicking off around about 12.30. Following that, the main pitch here is Watsonians versus Christophe and Cougars in the Sierra Vini Cup. Number five, number three, Which number two. Which BBC Alba. And then Silver Saturday culminates here in the home of Scottish rugby with Hoyt. <coughs> the current Premiership champions taking on Ma a team they defeated in the semi-finals on the way to lifting that trophy in April. Thanks Mike, I think there was a question that they might not know the answer. We've still got five this tantalising minutes of rugby left here between the two teams 
separated by a few points this afternoon seven points still the difference the points difference in West Division 1 was it. perhaps a little bit more this is what you're after it but this is Cup Rugby and East Kilbride now have the penalty in front Time of the on. posts offside taking time here with the penalty obviously tap and go deploy the powerful runners as they carry forward and East Kilbride and come again the drive from Stewartry comes back at them accuracy is important here for East Kilbride if they want to try and take this game to extra time or snatch Advantage it at the day another penalty coming on the 14 men of Stewartry that's good ball carrier carries forward but the referee signals the penalty yet again and there's a, a high penalty count coming on here for Stewartry isn't it? they're going to have to be careful otherwise you can easily come down to 13 but it's just testament to the pressure that East Kilbride have put in uh, Onto surgery. Five black and 14 change. Yeah, so it's a penalty. Penalty count. Uh, three, like, team warning, okay? Yeah. Three occasions where we're, we're pushing the tackle height here, okay? Tackle after tackle. Tackles need to come down, okay? So yeah. Team warning for a penalty count. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, subs. Another great bit of communication there from the referee, Greg Cameron. What a great display of great officiating here it's not only a great occasion for all the players and the supporters and spectators but the match officials as well again. and Greg Cameron and Michael Milner and Brian ahead. McGruff have he's certainly done their duty as well there's been some tough calls as well out there as well James yeah absolutely I think they've uh, really worked hard on the tackle area um, as players get tackled tackle height creeps up and they'll have a next season as well with the new tackle height laws coming in I think they'll be it's good to see referees having that dialing in their mind into that area already going quick from the, the penalty East Kilbride he's not able to find their target so the momentum has dropped slightly but Thornton no, carries no, forward and rolls out of contact but stays tall and powerful in contact as well Stuart Trick living life on the edge seven points the advantage in the Shield final East Kilbride conceding territory the exit in the Stuart Tree 22 is that high pressure defence comes on from the side currently in the lead but East Kilbride sniffing opportunity on the fringes oh, come up Black back up Black back up Black Getting down well to protect the, the bouncing ball Shanky at first receiver rolled down his back and just forward a huge it's moment in the game that Stuart Street, the way they kind of defended from close to the try line and just with Guys, double start. tackles and staying disciplined in the line speed have really kind of put his Kilbride under pressure there and what a massive Time reward off, to get with only two and a half minutes left it's, that's a, a great example to see what you can do to make territory without the ball absolutely you don't always have to be running out the line and trying to smash guys it's actually staying connected getting in the eye line of the attack and just put on the pressure for your hey, presence and hey, I think the big thing there was the discipline so. just the double tackle form I think Lindsay and one of his teammates just bought time for the stewardship guys to, to to get time and yeah the, the instruments are coming out um, that's the first time I've seen a Vuvuzela in a while yeah it's a traditional instrument of d I hear let's get set please time's not on yet get set I want to dust that down from I'm trying to think when the South African World Cup was yet, but 2010 set. I need to have all the security to be strict on not letting us in not a fan of that certainly a an element on. of expectation now amongst the Stuartry fans that they can see this through yeah that's definitely lifted and there's definitely nervousness and yeah, I think that's it guys let's coach fight fight set hold scrum down popped in there from John Pickett the captain who's now playing the scrum half, Hog gathers. Yes! Back fit, yellow, back fit! Big carry there from Lindsay again, who's offered himself up for a lot of work yes. throughout proceedings. Yes! 
Use it. Back foot, yo, please, back foot. Stuart Tree now looking to just try and keep the ball in hand and wind down the clock. Fight on the floor now. The penalty is going to go the way of Stuart Rick, and time is certainly on their side. You're not allowed to dive on the ball, neither. Let's go, please. Been a, Let's go. We're entering the final yeah. stages of this game. It's it's been a it's been a competitive battle, oh, and um, there's certainly <coughs> a big call for you to make as Thank we'll you. probably hear shortly. You're uh, the player of the match. We'll be able to get a, an insight into the, the mind of James Wade who's been watching this game back with a, foot, yo, back foot. Bless them, bless them. a lot of interest. Back foot. Stuart Tree now looking to protect the ball and Stay on your feet, Black. carry Stay on your forward feet, as he power into contact yet again. Ball's available, ball's available. He's still right, going to have to work hard to try and rip this ball clear. Yes. from Stuart Trick, they're keeping the defensive line firm but it's predictable from Stuart Trick because they know that it's pivotal that they maintain the ball in possession but the penalty is going to go the way East Kilbride and then perhaps will give us a chance for East Kilbride to knock the ball forward and James that will give us a chance to see who you've picked for the, the player of the match in this uh, National Shield final yeah Del, there's, there's, been, there's been a few people sticking their hands up so um, big shouts out to from Stuart Tree, both wingers, Angus Lindsay's done a power work in uh, both attack and defence. Blackwood for East Coast Riders oh, definitely Black, pulled people back, but David Armstrong for the way he orchestrated the real positive Black, parts in Stuart's game. I think he's been instrumental and is probably the person who has been that difference maker in terms of guiding his team around. But big job to do now before we can start any celebrations. Yeah, there still could be a, a lot of time left to play in this game if East Coast Bride they get what they want from this passage of play. The sand and the egg timer has uh, certainly trickled away for East Kilbride and they know that this is the, the last roll of the dice into the 22. Shanky now carries forward and powers his way through three or four challenges, leaving Stuartry bodies in his wake as he tries to set that hold and that chasm in defence for his teammates. He's been bundled into touch. And the referee is called the final time in this game. The full-time whistle echoes around BT Murrayfield and it's redemption for Stuart Trick. They were defeated here 21 years ago in the Shield final against Kirkcaldy but they get their moment in the sun as they see it over the line. 15 points to 22. They have defeated East Kilbride and they had their backs on the ropes for the last 20 minutes of this game but ultimately it's for moments like this, the celebration with your teammates. They'll get the chance to get their hands on the shield, but what a start to Silver Saturday it's been, James. It's been some game, hasn't it? And I think we may be worried after the first 15, 20 minutes that it could be a bit of possession, but East Kilbride have got a massive, have played a massive part in this final. The way they fought back, used their tools, their power game, their kicking game, their ability to turn ball over to just give a really fascinating contest. And like I say, Stuart they were really hanging on there, but just that bit of quality just from the halfbacks and their wing play really just yeah build that platform for them to kind of hang on to but yeah if that's the standard for the rest of the games we're in for a decent day of rugby aren't we yeah it's great to see cup finals day back at BT Murrayfield and Silver Saturday here obviously the damn health as well just in behind but it's Stuart who managed to pick up the first piece of silverware as they are the winners of the National Shield up next at 12.30, we've got the, the Women's Shield final coming to you live as well. So don't go anywhere this afternoon. And spoil for choice for rugby. Thank you, sir. Is it the teams in club rugby have worked their way to the final? And it's going to be the West of Scotland against Carthur Claymores in the Women's Shield final. But we've still got plenty of time for Stuart Reed to just enjoy their moment on the main pitch there. Thank you. That's a great game. Well done. Thank you. you can see relief there as well as joy. It's the way they exploded off the bench at the end there. But uh, yeah, they've had to earn that. Definitely. And, and, and that's what cup finals are all about. We, we spoke about it at the beginning of the game. East Kilbride were the, 
one of only two teams to beat Stuart this season. You know, it's, East O'Brien have had a difficult campaign and this game could have probably went one of two ways. You know, it was either going to be a tight, tight game and either team could have won or on paper, Stuart would have walked away with it. And we're, you know, we're, we're grateful that it was the, it was the first of us. Yeah, and I think that's just testament to kind of what an announce that East Kilbride showed, the kind of figuring out Stuart as they went on, looking at how they played, looking where they could get at them. And it was... Uh, a great contest, one that definitely doesn't reflect the league positions or how things have gone this season. So yeah, that's the beauty of Cup Rugby, isn't it? You just need to find that moment in that on that day and just go after it. And yeah, the East Cup White crowd, uh, really proud of the lads here, just down in front of us to the right here. Yeah, East this, is, this is great to see. Both both sets of uh, players have went towards the stand side just to congratulate the, the support that they received. You know, and that is what this day is all about. It is putting club rugby in the spotlight and rewarding the, the people who, you know, dedicate a lot of their own time to sustaining something so important to their communities. And East Kilbride, disappointed in defeat, but really grateful of the support that they received. The Stuart Tree spectators there as well. You know, they're celebrating in front of their, their fans but it's just great to see both teams in tandem walking towards the spectators just to you know, thank them for the support that they've received, not just for today, but for the years gone by, you know, the, the, the journey that they've all been on, all their individual journeys. And it's been great to, a great moment to see that. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, these things happen once in a playing career, if you're lucky. I think it was in 20 odd years since either team have been in a final here. So these are big moments. I think it's, just, it's, it's a combination of effort. These clubs are run by volunteers. Um, supporters, coaches, volunteers, players all giving up time and it's, uh, it's great to see the big reward with days out like this and the support from both communities. The respective towns of Castle Douglas and East Kilbride will be proud of the efforts of both teams, definitely. That's it. David Armstrong collecting the, the Player of the Match award which was uh, decided by James Wade alongside me. A, a very popular choice, I would believe he was instrumental in Stuart Tree's charge towards picking up their first ever Shield trophy. It's now a, a chance for East Kilbride to get their runners-up medals. And so close to almost being a different colour because you know in the second half the performance that they came out with was uh, was brilliant. It was almost against what we seen in the first 40 minutes, but they came out a completely different team. Revitalised, it was almost as if the pressure was off and they came out a different side. Yeah, sometimes when you're chasing a lead down, it's, it's really easy what you need to do. Um, I think the coaches would have at half time recognised the momentum shifts, the mistakes that were happening, and they definitely cut that out and enforced that upon Stuart to you. And I say just a couple of moments towards in that half that could have maybe gone their way, kick here and there. 50 22 here and there would have put them into a really positive positions, but they can be massively proud of what they've done and brought back into that game. Uh, a real positive display of rugby as well. Middleton leading his team up, and uh, there was a nice moment there with uh, Matthew Smith, who was nodding and shaking hands with a, a few of the, the Stuart Tree spectators who are on the side that they have to, to walk up onto the, to collect their medals up to the, the platform. So some good smiles, it's a, it's a great occasion, but this is, uh, you know, it's a competitive game that these players were all involved in. There's obviously disappointment in there, but there'll be immense pride in the club for the 22 players who took to the field in black and yellow this morning, almost encroaching in the afternoon. But it's been a, a great start to Silver Saturday this morning. A couple of players instrumental there as well. Like the Blackwood, we did mention, he's just getting his uh, medal hung around his neck imminently. Nice polite exchange there as well. You know, there, there, there's moments in this game that in defeat, the rugby career's a long time. Think about Blackwood, he's 20 years old. You know, he, he's got another decade at least playing rugby, but these will be moments that you'll all look back on in time. Oh, definitely. I, I'd literally just look down to see how old we were there. Really mature display. Hopefully they'll learn from this. This will be something to spare maybe some of the older guys to give it another year. Um, and again, because you never know when your next cup run might happen and when you might uh, get another chance for a day or like this. So this will be, this will inspire a few more and to maybe train getting back into pre-season and see what they can do for East Cup by next year. Beautiful season as you get to start again.
Yeah, a relatively young squad in terms of the, the demographic and the makeup of the of these club right side. So there's certainly a, another chance for two in there for a lot of those players. And now the chance for the, the match officials to get their reward for their morning's efforts. Greg Cameron, who is the, the referee, the two assistant referees in Michael Milner and Brian McGruff, and then supported by the, the number four official Scott McCall. They all get their pats in the backs and rewards for their contribution to what was an entertaining fixture in terms of officiating. You know, they let it play. It was really, really good and well officiated. Really well officiated. You can hear on the comms, the clarity in uh, Greg's communication. Players were all knew what was happening on, managed the penalty count really well. So, hey, massive contributors to what was an entertaining fixture. Now is the turn for the victors to savour the moment and revel in the attention that they're going to be receiving on the walk-up to receive their winners' medals. Some exchanges there and a couple of handshakes as well, led at the back by John Pickett, certainly a, a family affair as well. John Pickett and Brother Andrew Pickin part of the squad, the, the two farmers, and then James Pickin is the, the president of the club. And the shooting players now gathered just above the tunnel, and they're waiting for that photo that's going to be hung in the club rooms for many, many a year. Yeah, these things will uh, they'll be there for a minute, like I say, many a year. It doesn't come around very often, and uh, it's something the club will be really proud of. There'll be some uh, party back in Castle Douglas tonight, I imagine, as well. So, yeah, you can see it's going to be a great day. For the benefit of an early kickoff, you get to enjoy, enjoy the fruits you leave Yes, yeah. there'll be a couple of double espressos just to recharge the batteries after what has been a, an entertaining start to Silver Saturday. And as the whole squad get the, the medals hung around their neck, they're led up by. John Pickin, the, the captain, and on his 141st appearance for Stewartry, he's perhaps going to revel in his greatest success leading this side. And as he takes the shield carefully to the, the front, his famous teams have lifted this Kakodi Glasgow Hawks, and it's now the turn for Stewartry to put their name on the men's national shield, John Pickin lofts it above his head after they've defeated East Kilbride here, 15 points to 22 in the opening game of Silver Saturday at BT Murrayfield. And their spectators, their support, the coaching staff and the players will all get to revel in this historic success for this team from Castle Douglas in their 53rd year in their history of tasting success at a national final and it is a huge, huge moment for this club. Yeah, like you say, been around 50 odd years, second time on more field. This will be something again that hopefully kids in the mini and youth section, women's section will look at, aspire to and will drive the kind of next group of players and coaches coming through and volunteers so this can be a real catalyst for a club to kind of move on so yeah same with East Coast Bride these kind of days will hopefully inspire a few kids in the club to kind of like you know what I want a piece of that when I'm a girl definitely it was something that I can say from experience as a youngster watching your hometown club be successful we eventually got to a shield final I was injured shot club, so I wasn't able to taste that success but it is those sort of things which provide that motivation and that story for youngsters to, to really aim for and know that playing here one day is uh, certainly possible but it's been great natured I think both sets of spectators and have played their part as well still a, a huge amount of support here as Stuart to take their place on the uh, the main pitch here. Gather round and we're going to revel in the, the final bit of 
the formalities perhaps before the informal part of the celebrations can take hold. The best bit. The best bit is John Pickett lifts the men's National Shield final trophy again. And that is uh, going to be front and centre of any club event that's going to be held at Castle Douglas for the, the next 12 months. And they'll be working another tilt at it again. So thank you very much for joining us for this uh, first game in Silver Saturday but don't go anywhere because coming up at half 12 we've got the Women's Shield final and it's certainly the bar has been raised very high by these two sides East Kilbride and Stewartry have uh, treated us to a, a classic here at BT Murrayfield that finished East Kilbride 15, Stewartry 22 we've got West of Scotland against Carthag Claymores coming up next live an exclusive here from BT Murrayfield and then you'll see there as well Hoyk versus Mar in the cup final which kicks off at 6 o'clock Sandwich in between there in those two uh, penultimate games is uh, the, the Serabini Cup as well, which is live on BBC Alba. So loads of rugby to join us here at BT Murrayfield here this afternoon. But it's uh, Stewartry who can revel in the success after they have picked up the National Shield here by 15 points to 22.